All right, boys, welcome to a beautiful episode today. As you see, we are in the garage. The garage is pretty much put together generally. We have stuff just kind of everywhere still, but my favorite part of the garage so far is this little guy right here. That's the favorite part today. See, I have a marvelous haircut here. Sorry, it's a little messy. It's kind of hot today, sweating a little bit, but we are diving into something very special. As you know, I did this video on the last channel. Drop a link to that down below. We are doing our take two on how to build a custom intake for your BMW X5D. This is for the E70 models. Uh, this may work on an F15, but this is majorly for E70 models. We're gonna dive into this today, folks. I've done this before on several other X5s and it was phenomenal, it gives you a better sound. I can't argue that it gives you better performance or dyno numbers. I haven't done that. I don't really care about that. I'll just be honest. I wanted to have clean air. I wanted to delete the other kind of weird, um, excuse me, God, intake system from factory BMW. Yes, it's great because BMW designed it, sure, but I personally didn't like it. So I wanted to redesign that and redesign it. I did. And we kind of went there and used some materials. We had raw at hand, got some different equations here. And um, we came up with this beautiful intake that sounds phenomenal, looks really cool, and knows you have clean air coming to your vehicle. And as we can see here, we have a complete stock intake system on this car. We have it where it sucks air in from this tube right here, goes back all the way through this, down this pipe and right to the good old Terpsky makers and then out to the exhaust into the world. So this is currently how your X5D gets its air. Just because it works does not mean it could not work better. We feel like there's a more efficient way to do this and one just, guys, a lot cooler way. Why don't you want this thing to sound good? That's what we're diving into today. You're maybe thinking, why would I want to do this, Clyde? Why would I want to dive into putting this intake on my X5? Well, one, you know you have efficient cold airflow because you're getting it from the front of the motor. With this stock system, the way it comes, you're getting all that hotness from the back of the motor where that intake just sits on top of the motor and lets all that heat kind of disperse and get up in there. And it kind of heat soaks the intake in a sense. That plastic, yeah, it's plastic, so it doesn't get as hot as metal in a sense, but it still gets, it gets very hot. And that cold air that you're getting from the front of the truck will now go through that little box, whatever you want to call box, uh, I don't know, hibachi box, whatever you want to call that thing, Those, the box on top of the motor and it gets hot and then it has to go to the turbo. So you're already getting hot air sitting in traffic, all that good stuff. With this intake, you're having efficient cold air sitting at the front of the motor. Filter 190 straight pipe 90 to the turbo. You're not having to go around, sit on top of the intake for a minute and then get back down into the turbo. And secondly, boys, it's cool. It sounds freaking phenomenal. And it looks great behind the grill of this thing. Now, dyno numbers, actual stuff like that, I cannot promise you're going to gain horsepower. I can't say you're going to make more power. It's going to be more efficient. I can definitely say it's going to flow better. But other than that, I can't say anything. Like I said, I just built this kit with some random parts. There's guys on the forum that have done the same thing. There's some 3D printed ones. I was going to dive into 3D printing one, but then again, the structural integrity of it and just... I, this stuff works. You guys can buy it. You can buy it from me. You can do whatever you want. It's just easy and it works. I may try to make this system better with Randall. We're using a different filter setup because the K&N one is not available any longer. We're kind of switching that up. Other than that, boys, let's dive right into it. Now, looking at your X5 right here, you're going to see we have our main pipe that comes in. We're going to go through this big black box right here, and we're going to come down past our mass airflow meter down to this little 92, which gets really thin right here, and then go down into our turps goes and out to the back to the exhaust. We're gonna go ahead and take all of this stuff apart, boys. What you're first gonna do is grab this tube right here. We're gonna go ahead and pop this guy off. You just kind of shake and shimmy him. And he will come right out. You're gonna set this guy to the side. We will not be needing him any longer. Once you have that guy taken out, we're gonna go ahead and get our bolts out of this intake for this. You're gonna need to go ahead and pop this guy off. We're gonna go ahead and pop this front cover off with these clips right here. We're also gonna dive into taking this screw out right here. This is going to be a T25 Torx. You're gonna go ahead and get this guy out. Next, we're going to take our mass airflow sensor off. You're going to go ahead and squeeze the two pins right here. And this guy should come right off just like that. Pull him back to the side. Next step we're going to do is go ahead and take this hose clamp loose. This will be a 7 if you have the little BMW tool. Or you can just use a flathead screwdriver. Looking at the front right here, you'll see down this way. If you look, you're going to find another clamp down here that you're going to have to get to get this hose off. It is right here. Mine was kind of twisted around. So I had to take a little 6 wrench right here and go about... I want to check right here and make sure you don't have any lines still attached. You're just going to go ahead and take your thumb, flick both these guys off. Now we can go ahead and kind of maneuver, maneuver this guy off of here. You're just kind of going to wiggle back and forth. This guy will pop off. You can leave your clamp on there if you'd like. And then we're going to go ahead and shimmy this guy off the bottom. Luckily, I'm going to get this turned now and I'm going to go ahead and loosen this a little bit. Once that bolt down here is fully loose, you can go ahead and take this guy and pull him up. 
I'm gonna twist him and he will come up just like that. Go ahead and have this guy off. That's kind of, this guy should have been pointed that way. Someone's probably maintenance this before. But usually they're pointed that way and you can get on it really easily with a ratchet wrench like this. And we're gonna do a set this to the side as well. We do not need this guy any longer. Something to note now that we have all this off, it's a good time to check all of your vacuum lines and make sure there's none that are cut or anything, have any slits in them. Go ahead and look over all these guys. You could also upgrade these to silicone right now if you wanted to. These were replaced recently, right before we got the truck. I know there's like oil everywhere, but it's a diesel and pouring oil in the stuff, but you can just make sure these are good. You want to check this wire right here. Make sure it's not going to hit the fan. Make sure that clip is still intact down here. Check your sensors. And now is a good time to check your oil drain lines from your turbo. So now is a really good time to go ahead and check all this stuff and just make sure you're good before you go ahead and dive and putting this intake on because right now you're going to have an open area. Let's dive into getting the actual old intake box off the truck. What you want to go ahead and do is make sure that you have your intake tube off, you have your mass airflow sensor unplugged, you have this one bolt out of here. You're going to have all of your clips unclipped. There's also a little clip right here on this back side. You can kind of see this indention. Make sure you unclip that guy. We're going to go ahead and pull this up. Just like this, pops the lid off and you're good. Super simple. The reason you're gonna do this is because we're gonna need to use this guy for our next step. There is a bolt on the bottom side. And now you have your mass airflow sensor. And see, it's kind of an oval shape. And that's why we're gonna use oval piping here on this job. And grab our filter out of the top of this. Just grab it by the corner. Oh man, look at that. Definitely had some stuff in here. Now, once we're at this step, you can go ahead and set your mass airflow sensor to the side. You'd make sure you don't want to damage this guy. Make sure your connector is down here on the side. We have this heat sheathing right here, keeping your vacuum lines in check. You also want to take this opportunity to go ahead and check that guy. Make sure he's not rubbed through or anything. Make sure he's still good. To remove this, we're just going to go ahead and pick up. There's little rubber grommets right here that kind of lock down. I'm just going to pick up and pry up just like that. There's one more. And now your intake is ready to be removed. After you remove that intake, you have the choice to go ahead and leave this kind of quieter on, whatever you want to call it. It's just like insulation. It kind of makes the vehicle a lot quieter. I'm just going to go ahead and pick this guy up. He does drop back behind the motor a good bit. Kind of pull him to the driver's side like that. And he's ready to come right out. Make sure if there's any dust, you won't drop it on top of the motor. Like I was saying, now is going to be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and clean all this stuff. Go ahead and check everything. With that insulating boot kind of being on here, it's a really good cleanliness item. It keeps the engine bay super clean on top of this manifold. And you can kind of go ahead and see everything and inspect it all. Inspect your PCV routing. See all that stuff. See if you have any leaks on that end. Just kind of go ahead and take this time to look over the whole truck. As you can see with the intake fully off, we are pretty freaking clean under here, boys. We don't have any leaks. We just have super clean plastic. Looks like it still came from BMW at the factory. Now it's a good time to go ahead and check these coolant lines running back here out of your brake reservoirs and just check over the whole vehicle. Because now that we're at this step, we are ready to go ahead and build our actual intake. Let's go ahead and get it on the bench over here, lay all of our parts out and see what we got. And here's our parts for this journey. We have our air filter, coupler, all that good stuff. Let's unbox it. All right, and here's our material list. We have our filter, we have our waterproof filter sock, we have our reducer, our straight piece of aluminum pipe, we have our two silicone couplers, and we have a bunch of T-bolt clamps. We're gonna need to assemble all of this together. Now, at the time of making this, I unfortunately do not have a kit fully prepared to go and ship to you guys right this minute. I am working on trying to get that now. I'm just working on an air filter that's not a K&N. There's nothing wrong with the K&N, but they are really pricey and they're red. So I want to get a different colored filter offered for you guys as well as socks and stuff like that. And just kind of diving into that. So bear with me right now. I have all the stuff down below. You can use my code to get all this stuff from Amazon and it'll come right to your door. I'm just working to make a package where you can just click one button and order it versus having to click this one, this one, this one, this one, this one and order it and then assemble it. So I'm working with me guys, bear with me here. I'm working on this, it's coming soon. Now to get this job done, I recommend you guys have a rag and an electric ratchet with a 11 millimeter socket. This is to tighten all the T-bolts and this is going to be for when we squeeze this guy in a vise. So technically, yes, you're also going to need a vise. The first course of action here is to kind of get this tube bent. We're gonna to need to get it in an oval shape. You wanna be careful, this is aluminum. We don't wanna crack it. So that's what, and we don't wanna scratch this up. If you like the polished looks, so we're gonna go ahead and take this guy, wrap him in a rag, just like this. And we're gonna go and put him in this vise and squeeze. Make sure to hold pressure so it doesn't pop out of here. We're gonna go ahead and just squeeze this guy very gently. And you'll see him start to make that beautiful oval shape that we are after here. You might have to do this a couple times. You're gonna to have to bend it beyond the point so it does hold that shape. Like I said, I just have a small vise here. This is a four and a half inch vise, and it is working wonders for me on this stuff. Once you pop this guy out of the vise, you will have your perfect little round oval here. Did not scratch this at all in any way. You have super good oval.
Safety first, boys. The next job here, you see how this compresses and it's not solid? So when we go to put our filter on there, our filter is just going to compress to, well, nothing. So we're going to take this little metal piece that we bought and cut a section out of it to make sure the filter has something to clamp onto that is very solid and secure. So I've started right here, as you see, you probably need an inch right here, maybe an inch and a quarter, and you're gonna go ahead and cut a piece of this off and it's gonna go into your filter. Now, once we have cut that, we see we have a lot of metal shavings. We are just pretty rough. I'm gonna go ahead and take a file and file all of this stuff down and make sure it's really smooth. And then if you'd like to give you guys peace of mind, just take a little pad, whatever you have, some 180 grit or something to kind of roll over the whole thing. Don't forget your sticker, folks. We have our filter here, and if you're wondering why we bent that thing into an oval, well, this would be the reasoning. Maybe k and has had some um, better quality in their uh, older days, I reckon. If you do decide to offer this as a full kit, you can just click one button and order the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and start bending this pipe for you guys. Probably so that way you don't have to do it if you don't have a vice or anything. It takes me a couple minutes to do it, so I'll probably go ahead and start bending this. Let me know in the comments down below. If you were to order one of these kits, do you want to bend this yourself, or do you want me to go ahead and bend it for you? Let me know in the comments down below, boys. And when I'm preparing this, it's kind of just me. I like to keep everything nice and clean, as you guys already know. So I kind of just roll this so it doesn't get too much stuff stuck to the silicone. Because you know with new silicone, it's really sticky and it can get all the stuff attached to it. So I kind of just like to leave this guy just like this. Then always check in these. Always check and make sure there's no debris in here where you're going to connect all this stuff. You don't want anything to happen like that. See, look, there's a piece of plastic right here stuck to this. You do not want that stuff going into your motor. Now once we're done, everything is clean. We're sure our hands are clean. We're going to go ahead and put the guy that we cut inside one of these pipes. It's going to be a little bit of a snug fit. You're going to have to stretch him, but you're just going to go ahead and essentially just squeeze this guy around this aluminum coupler. Once we have this in here, we are sure we are flush everywhere, just like this around the top of this. Same shape as our intake. And now when our filter goes on this guy and clamps down right here, he's gonna have a solid surface to clamp to versus where if we just clamped it over top of this coupler, it would just kind of collapse and would not seal. Now next, we're gonna assemble the mass airflow meter. You're gonna notice it has an arrow on here pointing for the airflow. So we're gonna make sure that we put that the appropriate way in the vehicle, just like that. Make sure it seats up all the way to the lip on the bottom. It'll kind of stop itself right here. Airflow goes toward the coupler that we're using. I'm gonna go and take this guy we're going ahead and slide a T-bolt clamp over top of this. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten this guy down. You're just going to get it pretty snug. A little last hand tight on here and just make sure it's snug. You don't want to over tighten this because you are tightening on the plastic. Once you have this guy pretty well, like I said, God, it's going to be hard to get this perfect. You can just get it generally around here to where you have a little bit of lip on this side. You're not all the way over on the edge right here. That way this guy can't come off. On the bottom hose that was in the truck sitting like this, we're going to steal this bottom hose clamp to use on the coupler we just made. This guy is going to go right down over top of this. We're not going to be able to get a T-bolt clamp because of how thin the wall is inside the truck. I'll show you guys a close-up in a minute. This clamp is going to be good and hold it sufficiently. It's been holding that plastic one for years, and it'll continue to hold this one for years to come. I just prefer T-bolt clamps where I can get them. But if you see the giant size difference that we have, it's just not going to be beneficial to use it on the bottom with how tight the clearance is on that factory turbo inlet. Now, before we go ahead and continue, we're gonna go ahead and put our dry sock on our filter. We're gonna go ahead and just take the guy out of the bag. He's going to stride and stretch straight over the top, just like this. And he's gonna kind of lock in on the backside to help hold him on here. If you'd like, you are welcome to kind of take a zip tie and help hold this guy on. I don't really think it's needed, but it definitely wouldn't hurt to give you guys a bit of extra security here. Um, you can kind of see how this goes in and it just kind of fits around this little lip very nicely and just encapsulates this filter and makes sure it's not going to get any debris in here. If we look down here where the inlet to the turbo is right here, you can see all of this kind of nasty, gunky debris down here. We're going to take a little rag and we're going to make sure we wipe all this out from the outside and we don't want to get anything that's dropped in here. All right, while we're right here, there's a few things to note. This wire right here is usually coming straight on beside this AC line right into the front. I went ahead and tucked this guy behind the AC line and ran it back through here, clipped it back into its coupler right there, and it's out of the way and it's not hurting anything. There's nothing rubbing, we're in a sheathing. This metal is not rubbing anything, it's going straight into its spot. So if you guys wanna do that, that will maybe help you a little bit here and just run that wire on the outside to give you plenty of room on this inside. Now there's something I do wanna note. If we're gonna go ahead and take and look right here on this spot where this little lip goes you'll see there is kind of a drop off here and it only goes down so far that's why we're using that little clamp to help give you guys a bit of a better angle here there's a little neural that's going to help lock everything in and the t-bolt clamp just doesn't fit right there unfortunately with this little lip where my finger is 
and it's gonna feel like it stops and doesn't seat all the way. But I assure you guys, it's seating all the way down. This is just how BMW intended it to go. Even though we're using an aftermarket custom intake here, it's going to sit down on that lip just like it was supposed to, and it's gonna fit nicely. You're gonna get around that lip using that little clamp. It's gonna make sure it squeezes very good. It doesn't let any air in or any debris, and it creates a nice tight seal. So it may feel like it's not going down all the way. Just take a flashlight and look right there. You can see kind of behind the strut bar underneath it and see that little lip and just make sure you're touching it all the way before you go ahead and tighten it, and you should be good to go. Okay, now looking at our mass airflow meter here, we're gonna notice the airflow direction arrow with this coupler that we're putting down as the reducer to connect to our turbo inlet right down here. We're gonna note that our mass airflow sensor points toward the driver's side of the vehicle, as well as both our clamps pointing towards the driver's side of the vehicle and pointing towards the front near the headlights. The reasoning for this is when this guy drops down in here, you see how tight we're gonna be with this space. We're gonna make sure that we have adequate room to go ahead and tighten these clamps enough and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have enough room for the airflow meter wire to connect to it and not be strained or under any pressure. Now, while we're right here, I would like to note there are two orientations you can use for your clamps. You can have this orientation right here where both of them are to the front, and you can reach both of them from this front side where the radiator is, and you can kind of get a wrench from this side. You could also take and flip the clamps around. I'm just using this for demonstration take and flip the clamps around and when you insert this you could tighten your clamps from this side whichever you guys prefer just note that the airflow meter is going to have to point in this way all right before we go any farther we're going to take our mass airflow meter which used to plug up right here we're going to go ahead and take this clip that's sitting beside the old filter housing we're going to pop that guy off that way we can take this guy and get him to where we need now here we're going to go ahead and install this we're going to use my personal favorite method of putting the clamps to the back side of the passenger firewall at the turbo we're going to go ahead and slide this guy down on here You're going to know your mass airflow sensor is going to sit right here in front of the cam tensioner right there at the front we're going to make sure we have all these clamps out of the way not touching anything see that you have perfect access to go ahead and loosen these some people like to put the clamps right here but i just feel like it's easiest to put them over on this side okay and here's my example of what i'm talking about i'm going to show you with a screwdriver right here is where it sits down and fits very well so you're going to see that we're kind of slanted a slight bit we're going to straighten that out in a second but i want to take this time to utilize and show you guys right here where this is going to go down and hit it's going to go down and hit at this spot right here on this bottom clamp i feel like this may be the best angle to show you guys if you see right here on the bottom clamp it's a little hard to tell we are hitting all the way down there and that's going to be our stopping point it may not feel like it fits because i promise it still doesn't to me but i've had this kit on the last x5 for over a year with no problems and no leakage it's going to fit well and seal you have that little lip to hold it on and that's why we're utilizing the factory smaller bmw clamp going to do a pull and shake test i'm trying to pull the thing off right now and i can't you're going to tighten that as much as you can i'm going to grab our mass airflow sensor wire now and go ahead and connect him you're going to do this by pulling him putting him down here might be easier to stick your hand through the front cover and just like that you can just go ahead and take your thumb and push him down and plug him in and he should be plugged in and ready to go and then we're going to take this wire right here make sure he's out of the way and you can go ahead and probably zip tie him to this little guy right here just to keep him nice and tucked out of the way so he doesn't hit the fan right here is good as well if you just kind of want to leave him dangling but i like to make sure everything's secure so you can either put a little zip tie on this guy or this one as well and just to keep them out of the way i like to make sure i do this guy so i just kind of keep them all together and tuck neatly out of As we see looking at this pipe right here, we notice we are the same length. This is exact 90. What we're going to do here is probably cut off a half inch or an almost an inch right at about the size of this T-bolt. We're just going to go ahead and take an exacto or something and make a nice straight line. Follow one of the grooves in the silicone and go ahead and cut this off so this guy's going to sit down nice on the top of the motor. It's about all you want to cut off right there. Like I said, it's about the width of this T-bolt clamp, maybe a little more. It's about an inch. I kind of messed up right here, and I just straightened it out on the edge, so we're pretty still straight. I'm going to go down here, put it on. And on this part, it wouldn't hurt to take some WD-40 on your finger and kind of lip it around this, help it slide on nice and easy. You just don't want to spray in here and get it all on the inside. A little bit on this lip is not going to hurt anything. Once this boot is on here, we're going to go ahead and note it's in this orientation pointing towards the front of the motor, kind of right here towards this little groove cut out in the top of the radiator support. You're going to make sure this clamp is going in the down orientation. You don't want to hit your hood. You do not want to hit your AC lines. You want to keep it nice over this way. We're going to go ahead and squeeze this guy in here just like this. Should fit nice and easily now that we've got some little bit of lubrication on here. Just like that. And go ahead and push this guy in here. And you're probably gonna to wanna to go about maybe an inch or a little bit like an inch and a quarter in here and just make sure you have this guy facing the front so that you can go ahead and put your other coupler on. Our clamp, slide him over the top right here. We have to squeeze him into this oval orientation just a little bit right here to get him to slide over. 
to be a little bit of a snug fit. We're gonna go ahead and take our next clamp and install it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy right to the edge, make sure it's fully unclamped. We can squeeze it nice and good. Go ahead and squeeze this guy and go ahead and just put him in the center right there. Put a WD-40 just on the outside. I'm gonna make sure the metal clamp is going down towards the radiator. Just like that, that guy should go on there. And you're gonna just take it until it kind of gets set in this groove right here and see it's a nice fitment, everything is good. Then we can take this guy once we have him straight, make sure he's in the orientation we want him in. Coming down here and looking at the pipe going right in front of our radiator right here, you can see that we have our oval piece and is making the oval shape kind of long ways this way to follow the car. You don't want to have the oval shape like this. Then your filter is going to kind of sit sideways and may run into some hood clearance issues. With your... So make sure this oval is pointing long ways like this, guys. And as before, as we were talking about, you could take a zip tie and put around this to kind of help seal it. You could also just use this clamp and kind of tuck this mesh up under the clamp so that way the clamp will seal the mesh. Okay, now this one might look a little bit different than yours as this top piece is broken right here and we just kind of dealt with it. Brandon didn't want to choose to do anything right now and that's perfectly fine. It's not hurting anything. It just kind of helps put the motion there for the kidney grills. I'm going to take a little bit of a pick and kind of get and stretch this guy around. Once you have all that connected, you are good to go. Go ahead and check behind, your, behind yourself again. We wanna make sure that we are not rubbing anything right here. We have adequate spacing under all of this. We're not touching anything except some rounded edges right here. Leaning on this guy a little bit is not gonna hurt us and we're just touching him on the inside. No metal is touching. We also wanna check down here at our air filter, make sure we are not rubbing the power steering line with this. I can fortunately get a finger all the way under this guy and you wanna make sure you can do that. If you don't, then just loosen these clamps back up and kind of slide this guy back together and squeeze him. And boys, that is gonna conclude your X5D cold air intake installation. You are ready to go, you are all sealed. Just check back behind yourself, make sure everything is still tight, make sure the car sounds good, you don't have any weird leaks, it doesn't idle weird. You shouldn't need a tune for this. I've ran my car without a tune for this for the last year and a half, hasn't had a problem at all been phenomenal even the guy we sold the last x5 to is still running the car to this day no problems at all so we're like three years rolling with the x5 colder intake same exact setup same exact parts no issues buttery smooth boys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below let me know if you have guys have any questions if you want one of these intakes shoot me an email email is down below in the description and right here on the screen qcautoworks at gmail.com shoot me an email boys ask me questions if you want one of these i'll be having to ship it fully ready to go to your door so you don't have to click all these different things or if you want to click all these different things and build it yourself all of my links for amazon are down in the description below i do get a little credit for that so if you want to do that and help support me check out the amazon links or shoot me an email and we'll get you a kit ready to go to your door either way boys i hope this helped you i'm happy to do this video and help bring some info to you guys and help just walk you through this process i want to do another one of these videos kind of more up to date and detailed i've got a lot of traction with the other videos and everybody loved the last one so i figured why not go ahead and update this and do another one for 2024 boys thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it drop me a huge like hit that subscribe button and if you're feeling a little frisky boys hit that notification bell and let me know what you think about this content there'll be a lot more x5 stuff coming we're also doing an exhaust on this we also got some stuff coming to the m3 and then caitlin's car back there hiding in the shadows we have a bunch of stuff coming up for that guy a lot of track days here boys and just a lot of stuff in general so hit that subscribe button you don't want to miss any of this i love you guys i will see you next time